Give us a sense of the role of technology in education right now uh, around the world, but particularly in the United States. Yeah, well, David, I thought your piece on uh, the student debt crisis that you had on Tuesday, one of the things that came out of that is that that's at least in part a college completion crisis. There are 20% of Americans over the age of 25 who started higher education in some form or another but have absolutely nothing to show for it in terms of an associate or, or bachelor's degree. So one of the first things I think that EdTech can help us do is really help more students to be successful. How do we do that? Uh, we make the whole experience much more uh, pleasurable, much more engaging, much more like the way they engage with other aspects of modern life, uh, much greater use of video, much greater in interactivity, and much more personalized with much greater feedback, and also helping them to see much more quickly how what they're learning can translate into earning and how what they're studying in form of education can help them with employment. If it helps, I can give you some specific examples of that. But it's really about making it much more personal, much more adaptive, much more immediate, much better feedback, and also dramatically enhancing uh, the productivity and the experience for teachers as well. John, do we have any data yet on the extent to which actually using technology can make essentially the higher education experience stickier, if I can put it that way? So give you, uh, give you a specific example, uh, one of the major reasons that working adults in particular who go back to community college struggle is they struggle with uh, developmental math. They, don't, they haven't learned the math they should have done in high school and they find it even harder uh, as an adult. We now have a, a decade of data that tells us that by using uh, personalized technologies of the sort that I've described, you can dramatically improve completion and success rates. But the exciting thing is we're only just at the foothills of what's possible. Uh, to give you a specific example, one of the things we've learned over the last decade is like in many other spheres of modern life, it's not about the machine replacing the human, it's working with it. And still the best way to solve a math problem is actually to get a piece of paper to write out the problem and then work out the doings in, in real time like that. We now have a piece of technology that enables you then, as a student, take out your phone, take an image of your answer, send it to the machine, and in real time, it not just grades the answer, but it tells you if there were five different elements to that quadratic equation, if you got four of them right and one of them wrong, it points you to the feedback. It can put up a virtual tutor. It can provide that same feedback to the teacher and the professor so they can learn about the whole class. It's a great example. I mean, people talk about precision healthcare or yeah. precision medicine. Right. This is precision education. It's incredibly transformational if we get this right. right. Alan? Well, uh, first of all, John, that's a really exciting development. And I have said in the past, one reason for optimism about the future is that the economy runs on human capital and we can take advantage of the technology to spread human capital, to provide greater access. And we haven't done that enough yet. I'm curious, John, which countries are doing the best job? Where are you finding that the schools are willing to experiment, willing to do serious evaluations, of whether the new technology is working, willing to train the teachers to use it? Where have you found the greatest receptivity? Well, uh, I mean, if it's helpful, having followed the debate this week, I think it's fair to say that pretty much every country in the world is agonizing about the future of education, and every country in the world has its own challenges and things that it does well and things that it does need to do better. I think one country that I would pay very special attention to is China. Uh, some really interesting, innovative, dynamic things been done in the consumer education space there. Uh, every parent very, very focused on making sure, for example, you were talking about early childhood education the other day, real focus on early childhood education, and parents not waiting for school districts or governments or states to come up with the answer. They're taking personal uh, responsibility. Uh, I was in a school in, a, in one of the poorest neighborhoods in Kenya uh, last week. I'm really interested to see the way they were actually using very basic technology through a tablet PC to ensure that wow. they could be sure that every child in first wow. grade was at least learning yeah. basic reading and uh, literacy and numeracy. Yeah. But if, yeah. a, uh, if as the head of a company that is primarily US based but has an accent like mine, maybe there's one bit of reassurance I can give you. America 
undoubtedly is the world leader in education technology and some of the most interesting and innovative things that are happening, especially, I'd say, in the higher education yeah. sector, That's are, happening, are happening in the, in the yeah. US okay. and looking at the growth, for example, right. in online learning, yeah. uh, really, really exciting, interesting times.